So the, so the soldier says, I am thinking of having my crew switch from Uzi submachine guns to Tommy guns. The lieutenant asks why. I probably could have done this whole thing in funny voices. That might have been fun. Soldier says, uh, training new recruits on the Tommy would achieve a cost reduction of 9.9%. Lieutenant says, but that reason alone is not persuasive enough. We can instead hire only people who already have experience in using the Uzi gun. Which of the following, if true, most seriously undermines the lieutenant's objection to the replacement of Uzi submachine guns with Tommy, Tommy guns? It's important when the GMAT gives you um, a little bit of a summary of the argument to read that very carefully because there is more than one argument made in this particular passage. That's one of the reasons they specify it here, um, or we, I guess we made this question. Um, but take these as gifts. This gives you focus to your argument. We need to undermine the lieutenant's objection um, to the replacement of Uzi submachine guns. So the lieutenant's objection is we don't need to... Um, we could just, instead of having to train people to use the Uzi, we can uh, just hire people who already know how to do it, and that will uh, mitigate or completely reduce the effectiveness of the cost reduction mentioned by the soldier. So the soldier says Tommy guns, um, Tommy guns equal a 9.9 percent reduction. The lieutenant uh, says, well, you know, that's not enough. We can just save money instead by hiring guys who already know how to do this stuff. So we need to weaken the argument that hiring guys who already know how to use Uzis is going to save money. So A, all new enforcers in the syndicate must attend workshops on proper care and use of the Uzi gun in new situations. Well, that would be true regardless of whether they come in already knowing how to use it, because if all of them have to take have to attend these workshops, then that's not going to save money or undercut the lieutenant's um, objection. B. Recruits, upon learning to use guns, often change syndicates or become freelancers more often. Uh, again, that may be true, but that would be true either way. Um, whether they, you know, whether they, they all they all already know how to use guns anyway. We're just talking about people who know how to use the Uzi gun versus the Tommy gun. So that's not it. Uh, see, experienced users of the Uzi get much higher wages as compared with enforcers who are inexperienced in gun use. So here we have a reason why uh, hiring only people who already know how to use an Uzi uh, may actually cost more money than training them or than switching to a different gun, um, which is actually then cheaper cheaper to train. So this one undercuts the lieutenant's objection by saying, you know, hiring hiring experienced people may actually not be the answer. Let's check the other answers though. Uh, D, the average earnings of enforcers in the lieutenant's crew are below average compared to enforcers in competing crews. That's certainly something a CEO would need to worry about or a, or a crime boss in this case, a CEO of crime. Uh, but the earnings of enforcers, we're, we are worried specifically about experienced Uzi users. E, jammed Tommy guns cost more to repair than Uzis. Again, this would be something in the cost-benefit analysis eventually of adopting the switch um, to Tommy guns, but the expense of jams, we of course don't know how often they jam respectively, so it, it's not, it's kind of outside the scope too. So that leaves us with choice C, the fact that hiring experienced Uzi gun users may actually cost more um, than either uh, training people on the Uzi or training people on the Tommy gun.